Welcome to Health Chat. Today's topic is bone health. My name is Lauren, I'm a PA in orthopedic surgery. And in orthopedics, we diagnose and treat fractures on a daily basis. So we have the perfect opportunity to help identify patients who are at risk of bone density disorders. And this also means that we have the perfect opportunity to help educate patients and give them the tools and the information that they need to make positive decisions about their bone health. So the goal of today's presentation is to, to give you some tips and, and information to help make positive decisions about your own bone health. And we'll also go over some diagnosis and treatment options for different bone health disorders. We'll just go through a quick anatomy review of, of bones. So bones have two main portions, the outer layer of the bone or the cortical bone, and then the inside layer of the bone, which is called the trabecular or spongy bone. So if we look on the right, we have two pictures. On the, the healthy bone on the left side, you can see that there's, there's a lot of white area, and that represents that dense, healthy bone tissue. So that's what normal bone is supposed to look like. And if we go over to the right, we can see that the bone is weaker, that there's not as much of that dense, healthy bone tissue. And when the bone gets into that weakened state, that means that there's an increased risk of fracture, and that's, and that's what we want to prevent. And then on the left side, we have a diagram which demonstrates the spectrum of bone density. So there's normal, healthy bone, there's osteopenic bone, which is kind of that middle range, and then there's osteoporosis. So osteoporosis is a, means that there's a significant decrease in bone mineral density, and osteopenia is kind of in that middle range. And it's important to emphasize that bone health is important at all ages. We typically talk about bone health in patients 65 and older. However, it's really important for pediatric and adolescent populations to start building healthy bone early. And this means getting adequate calcium, adequate vitamin D, and then also maintaining a healthy, active lifestyle. Peak bone mass is usually achieved around age 25 to 30. So it's really important during the younger years to develop strong and healthy bone because once you reach peak bone mass, the bone density decreases over time due to aging and then also other risk factors. And bone goes through a process of what's called remodeling, where it's constantly building up and breaking down. And if, the, if that cycle gets disrupted either by risk factors or such as medications or underlying health issues, that can throw off the, the balance so, such that the breakdown of bone happens faster than the buildup of bone. And when that happens, that results in decreased bone density. So calcium is, is essential, it's an essential building block for bone. And, it's, and it provides skeletal strength and structure. So the National Osteoporosis Foundation recommends that women age 50 and younger get 1,000 milligrams per day and that women age 50 and older get 1,200 milligrams per day. And for men age 70 and younger, they recommend getting 1,000 milligrams per day. And age 70 and older, they recommend getting 1,200 milligrams per day. And it's important to talk to your healthcare provider to see if these amounts are adequate for you. In some cases, we actually do want you to take more than that amount. So it's important to talk to your healthcare provider. And when we're talking about these daily totals, that's total between your dietary intake and supplements. So it's important to get good dietary sources of calcium. And some of these include milk, cheese, and yogurt. However, if you have issues with dairy or if you're lactose intolerant, there are other good plant-based options, such as dark leafy greens like kale and spinach, as well as soybeans and tofu and almonds as well. And fish such as salmon and trout are actually a good source of calcium as well. Now it's important to take vitamin D along with calcium. Calcium, or vitamin D helps your body absorb calcium. And it's nicknamed the sunshine vitamin because skin makes vitamin D in reaction to sunlight. I know in Ohio, it's pretty challenging to get a lot of sunshine, especially in the winter months. So it's especially important to get 
to get good dietary intake of vitamin D during the, the winter and, and winter months. So the recommended daily intake of vitamin D for patients under age 50 is 400 to 800 IUs or international units per day. And for patients 50 and older, we recommend 800 to 1,000 IUs per day. And some top dietary sources of vitamin D include fortified foods like milk and breakfast cereal. So when you're grocery shopping, just look for packages that say fortified with vitamin D. And also other sources include almond milk, salmon, sardines, eggs, shiitake mushrooms, and canned tuna. Now exercise is, is essential to bone health as well. Weight-bearing exercise helps promote strong bones. By subjecting the bones to weight-bearing exercise, it helps strengthen that, that trabecular bone, that picture that we looked at initially. It helps strengthen those, those connections in the bone. As always, check with your healthcare provider before starting any new exercise program, especially if you currently have a fracture. And exercise is also helpful for, for strengthening core muscles as well as skeletal muscle, and that helps you prevent falls. Some other steps you can take for bone health include not smoking. Smoking is toxic to bones. And talk to your healthcare provider about strategies to quit. There are medications and different programs that can assist and help you, help you quit smoking. And also avoid excessive alcohol intake. Excessive alcohol intake or drinking three or more drinks per day is linked to decreased bone mineral density. Osteoporosis is more common than we think. It affects one in two women and one in four men during their lifetime. And osteoporosis means that there's a significant increased risk of fracture. And it's often referred to as the heart attack of the skeleton. And what that means is that it often goes undiagnosed until a fracture occurs. So in our line of work, we see fractures on a daily basis. And and I specialize in hand and upper extremity, so I see everything from shoulder to fingertip. So that means that I see a lot of distal radius fractures or wrist fractures, and that's, that's often the first sign of an issue with bone health. So usually if I have a patient with that type of fracture, I recommend further workup, which Dr. Hauserman will, will talk about. So a fragility fracture is defined as a fracture that's sustained from a low velocity trauma, such as a fall from standing. And it usually occurs when there's an underlying issue with bone density, such as osteopenia or osteoporosis. The pictures that we see on the bottom of the screen are different examples of fragility fractures. So from left to right, we have a fracture of the hip, a fracture of the spine, a fracture of the wrist, and then a fracture of the proximal humerus or the shoulder. I'm David Hauserman, and I'm also going to be talking to you a little bit about um, bone mineral density and osteoporosis today. So Lauren talked a little bit about fragility fractures. What we see is that 50% of patients who have a hip fracture sustain a fracture at a different site prior to that hip fracture. So those are patients, um, kind of like the pictures here, uh, with the vertebral body fracture, the distal radius fracture, or the proximal humerus fracture. Um, those are kind of our captive audience where uh, we can really intervene and make a difference to help prevent a hip fracture because hip fractures carry with them uh, about a 20 to 30 percent one-year mortality rate, meaning that patients who sustain a hip fracture have about a 20 to 30 percent chance of dying within that first year following the hip fracture. So if we can help prevent the hip fracture from occurring, we'd be saving a lot of, um, you know, saving a lot of lives in orthopedic surgery, which, um, you know, we're not used to dealing with life and death so much. So the first step in treating osteoporosis is identifying it. And the way we do that is with the DEXA scan. Uh, DEXA stands for Dual Energy X-ray Absorptiometry. Um, it's a machine uh, similar to an X-ray machine that takes about 15 minutes um, and it measures your bone mineral density. It's recommended for all patients, age, women age 65 and older, men age 70 and 
and older, regardless of risk factors. Um, it's recommended in patients aged 50 and older who have risk factors, which could be long-term medication use, one of the most common um, culprits in medication-induced osteoporosis is steroids that are taken for um, various um, pulmonary disorders and rheumatological disorders. Um, so in a patient like that, um, they might need a DEXA scan at an earlier age to help um, diagnose osteoporosis. So the DEXA scan is quick and easy. It takes about 15 minutes. Um, it provides valuable information to your physician to help make um, treatment plan decisions. So when you get your DEXA scan and you get the results, um, it, it's gonna say one of three things. Either you have normal bone mineral density, meaning you have a T-score of greater than negative 1.0. Uh, so up to negative 1.0 um, and above. You could have a T-score of 2, indicating normal bone mineral density. Um, if you have normal bone mineral density, we would just recommend that you continue to do uh, the things that you're doing and making those healthy lifestyle choices to uh, maintain your good mineral, bone mineral density. And that would include uh, vitamin D and calcium supplementation. Um, the results may indicate that you have osteopenia. So osteopenia is a T-score of minus 1 to minus 2.4. And um, that's the T-score that the DEXA scan will provide you with. Um, depending on your risk factors, you might uh, qualify for treatment uh, with some of the medications that we use to treat osteoporosis, even if you have osteopenia. So, um, it's always important to, to talk to your provider to see what your options are. Uh, osteoporosis is uh, the T-score of minus 2.5 and lower, indicating decreased bone strength and an increased risk of fracture. So this here is a picture of what your DEXA scan results might look like. Um, your fracture risk is what determines whether or not we prescribe a medication. Um, your fracture risk is determined by your bone mineral density in addition to your risk factors. So um, the fracture risk assessment tool or the FRAX tool is commonly um, utilized by radiologists when they um, read DEXA scans and lots of patients will get a fracture risk um, in their DEXA scan results. So a uh, fracture risk of the hip greater than 3% and a fracture risk of another site greater than 20% in the next 10 years, um, that's our threshold to treat with, um, with medications. Vitamin and cal calcium are important baseline treatment. Um, they're important baseline supplements for everyone to take for their bone health. Um, a lot of times we measure the vitamin D level in patients and will alter our um, prescription of vitamin D based on what the vitamin D results are. So it's important to talk to your doctor about um, you know, what your vitamin D levels are at and whether you need additional supplementation to help keep your bones healthy. Now when you reach osteoporosis or you're in that osteopenia category and you qualify for treatment, um, that's when some of the other medications start to come into play. Some of those medications include bisphosphonates, so medications like um, Fosamax or Boniva or uh, Reclast, those, those can be given either orally or um, via injection, uh, either weekly or monthly. Some of them are even every six months. Um, then there's other injectable medications like Forteo or Prolia, which are injected every six months to a year, uh, depending on what your needs are. The goals of treatment are to keep your bones as strong as possible, to maintain that bone mineral density um, throughout utilizing diet and exercise strategies uh, like Lauren had talked about, um, but also the medications can help in this regard. Some of the medications help uh, keep the bone mineral density you have and help prevent you from losing that, 
uh, whereas some of the medications uh, actually help to build up that bone mineral density and, and help that improve. Um, all of this is done uh, in order to prevent fractures, um, specifically hip fractures that we spoke about a little bit earlier. Um, and really in treating osteoporosis, it's important to establish long-term care uh, either with your family doctor or your internal medicine doctor or your orthopedic surgeon um, to help monitor how your disease progresses over time and whether or not uh, changes need to be made to medications and treatment strategy overall. Um, also important in treatment is to continue to get DEXA scans uh, every two years uh, so that we can see how your response is to the therapy and uh, help, us, help us monitor your progress along the way. So next steps could include talking to your healthcare provider about your risk for fractures um, and to talk to them about your fracture history. Sometimes fracture history can be overlooked. Um, you know, sometimes we treat fractures non-operatively and uh, that fracture of your ankle a few years ago, you know, could mean that uh, there's an increased risk for osteoporosis. So it's always good to kind of have that open and transparent conversation with your provider. Um, and then another, another thing you can do is to ask if you're, um, if you're due for a DEXA scan. Uh, we spoke about some of those, um, those age ranges, so s women age 65 and older, men age 70 and older, um, regardless of risk factors. So similar to the colonoscopy that um, you know, everyone begrud begrudgingly goes to at age 50, um, you know, there's things that we can do uh, in the orthopedic surgery world to, to help screen for osteoporosis and uh, help prevent fractures and complications down the road. Thank you for joining us for Health Chat. We hope that this has been informative. Please follow up with your healthcare provider.